Hi, my name's Bren, and welcome. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, my name's Bren, and welcome to Project Strange. In this series, we're learning about the fundamentals of structure engineering and how it affects our day-to-day -day lives. Today, we're learning about internal stress. But first, let's talk about history. Humans have known about stress inside materials since ancient times, like the stress used to make a composite bow to hunt their next meal, or being stressed about being someone else's next meal. <laughs> but until the 17th century, this understanding was largely intuitive and empirical. Scientific understanding of stress became possible only after the necessary tools were invented in the 17th and 18th centuries, such as Galileo's experimental method, René Descartes' coordinates and analytic geometry, and Newton's laws of motion and equilibrium. With those tools, French engineer Augustin Louis Cauchy originated the theory of internal stress. He was able to give the first general mathematical model of a deformed elastic body by introducing the notions of stress and strain. He introduced a 3x3 three three symmetric matrix of numbers that is now known as the Cauchy stress tensor. More concepts and theorems have been named for Cauchy than any other scientist. He's kind of a big deal. In elasticity alone, there are 16 concepts and theorems named after Cauchy, making him a hall of famer in engineering. For both you and I to learn more, let's check out my interview with our friend Daniel. The interview. Daniel, yep. what is internal stress? All right. Mm. All, right so <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's say you've got a material, a piece of metal or even a concrete beam. Now imagine that the material is under some force. This force creates what we call stress within the material. Stress refers to the forces that develop within a material or structure in response to external loads. Stress can be used not only to predict when a material will break, but also to describe the state of affairs at any point inside a solid in a much more general kind of way. In other words, the stress in a solid is rather like a pressure in a liquid or a gas. It is a measure of how hard the atoms or molecules which make up the material are being pushed together or pulled apart as a result of external forces. Hey! How do we use internal stress in our everyday life? Even seemingly simple structures, like a biak, biak. Uh, <clears throat> do it again. Even simula even even seemingly simple structures like a backyard deck require careful consideration of internal stresses. Wood expands and contracts with temperature changes, causing subtle shifts in structure that over time can weaken the connections if not accounted for in the design. In essence, every beam, every joint, every slab tells a story of a delicate balance between strength and vulnerability, a story crafted by the precise understanding and application of internal stress in structural engineering. How do you use internal stress in structural engineering? In structural engineering, stress is a critical concept. Engineers use it to design buildings, bridges, and all sorts of structures to ensure they can handle the loads they'll face. They calculate how much stress different materials can withstand. To the trained eye, a structure might seem like a static, solid entity, but beneath its surface, within every beam, column, and slab, lies a complex ballet of forces, tensions, and pressures. Imagine a skyscraper soaring into the sky. Each steel beam, each concrete slab, bears an immense burden. But it's not just the weight of the structure itself, it's the wind gusts against its facade. These forces create internal stresses that must be calculated and managed to ensure the structure elements do not fail. <laughs> Bang bada boom! STRESS! <laughs> so basically, internal stress is a physical quantity that describes forces present during deformation. It expresses the internal forces that neighboring particles of a continuous material exert on each other. Woo! The internal stress is the sum of two components, the normal stress, compression or tension, perpendicular to the surface, and the shear stress that is parallel to the surface. The greater the force and the smaller the cross-sectional area of the body on which it acts, the greater the stress. And lastly, stress has dimension of force per area, with SI units of newtons per square meter or Pascal. That wraps up this episode of Project Strange. A special thank you to Daniel for teaching us about internal stress, and a special thank you to you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe to learn more about structural engineering with me. And don't forget to enjoy the process. Oh, Julian, what are you, are you making faces? <laughs> You're ruining my video.